Hey there, uh, just at Schiphol Airport, you probably would have seen some images and videos of just like horrific lines outside of Schiphol Airport due to the staff shortage. But yeah, thankfully we didn't have to go through that and we got through security really quickly actually. We are going to Switzerland this weekend, which is really exciting. I guess I'm not going to talk too much about it. I'm just going to wait until we are there and then I'll show you what we get up to. Actually, it's just a, a general public cruise. <laughs> but look how beautiful it is. Right now we're at the Heisbach Waterfalls. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Um, very worthwhile to come here. It's a beautiful waterfall. Uh, basically right now all the snow on the mountains has melted or it, it is melting. And that's why the waterfall is in full force. So it's quite a majestic thing to see. Now we're going to walk all the way to another town called Isatfold. Um, it should take us about one hour and apparently it's a very scenic route So yeah, Gustavo and I are on our way and as you can see behind me, I'm kind of in a forest That's essentially what I expect most of the trail to be like Such love. <laughs> How long did it take us? An hour and a half? Well, we're still a bit, maybe 15 okay, minutes. Okay, we're not so quite. We haven't quite 15. made it. We actually need to go there. And then we're going to take a bus to Interlaken. Everything was quite flat. I would say towards the end, it was quite downhill and it was quite steep. So yeah, if you've got like kind of dodgy knees, then maybe think about that. But otherwise it was quite an easy walk and very scenic, very beautiful. It would be nice to eat near here. Okay, guys, important part of this trip. If you have watched Crash Landing on You, it's a Korean drama series on Netflix. 
then you probably already have recognized some of the footage that I have shared. And that is because a part of Crash Landing on You was filmed in Interlaken and more specifically in Insefeld. I'm pretty sure this is the pier where, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the main guy, but where he plays the piano and everyone is so impressed by his piano skills. Anyway, I personally love the show and this is actually inspiring me to re-watch the show. But if you haven't watched it already, you definitely should. Look at the line. I mean, yeah, everyone here has probably watched the show. That's why they're here. <laughs> probably the locals are thinking, why are they all taking photos at this pier? So yeah, just thought I would share that. We came here especially to see this. Oh, and I forgot to say, it's actually clearly marked on Google Maps. That's how we found out. So yeah, you just look up, you know, crash landing on you site. Isn't that what it says, Gustavo? Yeah, crash landing on you landmark. And that's how you can find it. Absolutely amazing. We are in um, what they call it the Skyline restaurant. So Peace basically, Piz Gloria. Gloria. Um, so it's like a um, rotating restaurant. So you sit on the table and it just rotates you 360 degrees and you get to just enjoy this incredible mountain view. Yes, the menu. We're here. Yes. We got a seat immediately, ordered some coffee, got some breakfast, we didn't really eat this morning. And yeah, now we're just rotating.
Final day in Switzerland um, and we decided to leave Lucerne a little bit early and come to Basel. This is actually where we're flying out tonight so we just thought it would be smarter to just come here a bit early and make sure we don't miss our connections to catch our flight. It was raining in the morning, I was a little bit worried to be honest but then the rain disappeared and now it's actually a really nice day. Uh, so I guess that's something to keep in mind when you come to Switzerland during the summer. Apparently it is also one of the best times to visit, but it's also quite a rainy season too. Um, and at least in our experience, even if the weather forecast says it will rain, it will only rain for like a few hours. And then after that, it'll be sunny and you can enjoy the day like normal. We're just gonna walk around now, tick off some, you know, tourist sites in Old Town and then grab dinner and then catch our flight. So just gonna make the most of our last day here. It was actually slightly delayed um, but we are hopefully going to board the plane soon and be back in Amsterdam. I won't lie, I actually missed home. I hope you enjoyed seeing what our trip was like in Switzerland. Sam and I have wanted to visit for so long. Before I end this video, I thought it would be helpful to just give you some advice based on what we learned and based on our experience. So hopefully that's helpful to you. I think one of the biggest questions that people tend to ask when they go to Switzerland is whether or not you should get a Swiss travel pass. The answer to that totally just depends on your itinerary and how long you plan to stay in Switzerland, what you plan to do there. For instance, if you are going to be there for at least a few days, if you're planning to take a lot of train journeys, then it could save you quite a bit of money. My recommendation is to figure out your itinerary first and then calculate how much each leg of your journey is going to cost. So for instance, how much all your train journeys are going to cost. Then I would figure out how much of your itinerary is actually covered by the Swiss Travel Pass. Then I would just compare the total cost of your itinerary versus the Swiss Travel Pass cost. And in the end, the Swiss Travel Pass did save us quite a bit of money. The other benefit of getting the Swiss Travel Pass is that it just makes your life easier. It was like one ticket that allowed us to access most of the attractions or the journeys that we needed to take. So we didn't have to book things in advance. We didn't have to, you know, worry about buying separate tickets each time. We could just hop on and off trains whenever we wanted, as frequently as we wanted. And that itself was a huge benefit. On the topic of trains, chances are you will be taking a lot of trains 
throughout your journey in Switzerland. So my advice would be to download the SBB app before you go and allows you to just see all the different train routes in Switzerland. And also importantly, it allows you to see what each train journey is going to cost you. And on that note, I want to say something really important here. The train app will always show you the half fare costs, which actually does not apply to tourists. So in order to see the true fare cost, you need to click on the fare cost button and then you will see the true cost of your train journey that you have selected. So that's kind of important also for the previous tip that I gave where you have to manually work out how much your whole itinerary is going to cost. In the days leading up to the trip, we were really worried because all the weather forecasts were saying that it was going to be raining all the time, that there would be thunderstorms we thought oh my god you know we've picked the worst time to go but actually the weather is notoriously unpredictable there when it does rain it only rains for a couple of hours then it clears up also my other advice is to check meteoblue.com which is apparently the most accurate weather website in switzerland and i found that to be the case as well on the topic of weather just because there appears to be good weather that day doesn't mean that you're going to have really good visibility when you are on the mountaintops. So my number one tip here is that you can actually check the visibility of the mountaintops before you actually go there. You can just look it up online, just type, you know, the mountain that you want to visit, then webcam visibility, and you should find a real time webcam that's showing you what the view is like right now on the mountaintop that you want to go visit. During our trip, we visited two mountaintops. We went to Shilthorn and we went to Mount Ricci. As you could see for Shilthorn, we only got a partial view. We knew that before we went because we looked at the webcam visibility before we actually headed off there. And we were happy to just go and see a partial view. But for Mount Ricci, we did not see a single thing. And that was completely my fault because I did not look at the mountain visibility beforehand. I thought the weather looked good enough and I was wrong. Um, we didn't see a single freaking thing and it was quite an effort to go to Mount Ricci. So I would recommend you don't do what we did and you check the visibility before you go. The other thing I wanted to briefly touch on was about how expensive Switzerland is. It is just an expensive country to visit full stop. We tried to eat very simple lunches. We would go to the grocery store and just buy sandwiches and drinks from the supermarket. Um, if we had dinner, we had a simple dinner. We tried to go to Asian um, restaurants, which actually saved us quite a bit of money. And might I add the Asian food in Switzerland is really, really good. And the accommodation that we stayed in was very, very low budget. We estimated that we spent about 350 per day for the both of us, which is significantly more money than we would spend per day in any other country. So yeah. The final tip I wanted to share was just to check out the website myswissalps.com. This was hands down the best website that we came across. I just found that myswissalps.com made everything super easy to understand. They tell you exactly what route you need to take. They also have an online forum, which was really useful too, because people often ask the same questions that you probably have about certain destinations or certain routes. I hope those tips were helpful for you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. It just helps my channel grow. Otherwise, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye.